Welcome to the um, keynote uh, interview with um, Helen Smith from Impala. Um, we're going to run through um, what Impala is all about, what it does for, for the independent um, sector. Helen is the um, executive chair of Impala. And I think we, during our chat last night, we um, discovered that Impala is 17 years old, I believe, yes. So it celebrated its 15th anniversary a couple of years ago. And then we worked out that Helen has been the executive chair of Impala for 10 years. So it's Helen's 10th anniversary. So a round of applause for 10 years service to the independent sector. Do you get a gold watch? You get a medal later, yeah. but we didn't bring, we. We obviously realised last night we haven't yet manufactured the medal, but we will bring it to you at some point, delivered by DHL. Um, <laughs> so, uh, Helen, if you can um, tell us a little bit, a, a general overview of Impala, how it began, why, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, so Impala is a collective of independent labels and national associations across 19 countries across the, the U broader European territories. It was set up in 2000 and, well, 2000 or 2001, depending whether you've got the official 2000. version. 2000. Yeah, <laughs> but our statutes weren't registered until 2001, so there's always a bit of debate depending who you speak to. And it was set up by, interestingly, by PIAS and other independent labels and also national associations who could see that working together on a national level was delivering results and what they wanted to do was to take that equation and you know, take two plus two plus two plus two and, and come up with 20. So the compound effect of working together on a European level was going to bring results that just wouldn't be possible, whether you're working individually or whether you're working together at a national level. And you know, it was interesting because at that time, there was a, a real distinct move in the, in the market towards digital. The independents wanted to be doing more licensing to, to liberate the, the, the music. There was a, a probably a slightly different approach within the major companies at that time when there was more focus on, on control of distribution. So it was a real opportunity for the independents to actually do something together which wasn't possible before. But it's important to say that Impala doesn't replace anything local. The local organisations feed into a par Impala. Yeah, absolutely. It's a, it's, it's a totally bottom-up organisation. Yeah. Um, and so its general aims are, yeah. to, are to create, for instance, a stronger voice for the independent sector within, within the industry, to aggregate better deals for the, for the industry, etc. Yeah, absolutely. It's to use that collective voice and, and maximise all, all commercial opportunities by working together. And if you look at what working together means, that's, that's you know, this, the numbers are really impressive. So it's 80% of all new releases in Europe today. Well, so that's a, yes. So that is, that is, you know, it's a really interesting statistic. It's over 80% of the jobs, very high percentage of, of youth employment in, in music and other cultural sectors. So those are the types of, of, of message that you can get across when you work together. I mean, other types of, of collective opportunities are, you know, working together to come up with loan schemes, finance opportunities, work together with talking to the major companies or collecting societies, working together on, on issues like transparency, fairness with, with platforms, you know, a whole load of issues you can, you can cover when you, when you work together. So, how did you become the executive chair of Impala? What was the history behind moving into that, into that role? Okay. Well, I was um, I was actually working in in Brussels. I'm from Scotland originally. In case you're wondering about the accent, 
Um, and, uh, and then I, uh, I was in, in, in Brussels working there and I moved to, to London. One of the reasons I moved to London was because I, I, I felt that I wanted to, to move into music or another, another sector and I started working at AIM, which is the UK independent organisation. And, um, and funnily enough, we were actually set to stay in, 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 in London. My, uh, my husband's from Brussels. And one day we were buying a house and the next day they said we sold it to someone else. And we said, OK, well, maybe we don't need to stay in London. Let's, what about Brussels? Let's go back to Brussels. And that was it. It was just one day to the next. And, uh, and literally within a few weeks, uh, we were attending an Impala board meeting. And the, the person who founded Impala, Philippe Kern, said, I'm looking for somebody who's a native English speaker. Do you know anybody? And, and that was it. So it's one of those kind of you said yes. series of, uh, of events. That's so you what took me back to Brussels. So the house market, you were gazumped in the house <laughs> yeah. market. And an actual fact, it, we, you're the only person I know who got gazumped in the house market and then... And was pleased about it. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Which is really quite, yeah. quite cool, I think. Um, <laughs> so at that, prior to that, you were, you were a legal counsel. Yes. At AIM, you were the yes. legal counsel for, for the organisation. I think at the time you were legal counsel, I was on the board at AIM as the marketing representative. So, um, and so that is a requisite, a prerequisite for the, for the job you feel that? Um, I don't think it's a prerequisite, but it's certainly useful when you've got to cover issues like how copyright is going to be revised in Europe. It's certainly useful to have that understanding. But I think a lot of people have that understanding in the, in, in the sector. It was certainly useful when you talk about, you know, if you have to go up in front of the, the, the regulators and talk about competition cases, talk about legal issues. Yeah, it's, it's, it's useful, but I don't think it's indispensable. So uh, bringing a mention of regulators and um, obviously regulators within the EU, um, there are a number of... Hmm. The, the media tend to call them battles. Yes. I think you have a different idea or a different view of what it should be termed. So the, the big things that media have written about that Impala has been a leader in has been um, a number of ways where you've been inside the EU and lobbied with the regulators um, to look at various mergers. Um, the first... I think was in 2001, very soon after yes. Impala was, yeah. was set up, which was the EMI Warner, proposed EMI Warner merger. So tell us a bit about the process of yeah. going through that with the European Union. So obviously, you know, when you have two big companies that want to, to, to merge, then that's the job of regulators. They say, is this good? Is this bad? What's going to happen? And I think before Impala, there was n never a voice that said, look, this is what is going to happen to the, the, the independents, to the, the smaller players in the, in the market. So, you know, for the first time, they had a, a different I had a different voice in the room that was expressing some concern. And then I think also at that particular time, you know, there was a, an ethos within the regulators that you know, too much concentration in, in key markets is maybe not such a good thing. Um, so those two things came together and the, the commission said, OK, this is, this is not such a good idea. And the parties got concerned and they walked away. So that was like a, the first time that I think the independence voice was heard in a real, a real meaningful commercial way. And it wasn't the last time though. No. So obviously there's been a, to an extent there's been quite a, it's been a habit <laughs> of Impala to do these, to do these things. So even if you look at the Sony BMG proposed, there was a merger plan that was a, I think in the end it was a joint venture. They yes. ended up in a joint venture situation, Sony and BMG together. The, again, there was the same going to the regulators and saying this would be unfair for the yeah. independent sector. And the, the res there was already an approval, wasn't there? Yeah, it was funny because that, that case was, you know, it was, it was really interesting. The commission said, do we think this is a bad idea? And then all of a sudden, it was approved. 
So they raised all these concerns and then it was approved. So we, we decided that it was so important that we actually, that, that the voice of the independents was heard and was not ignored, that, that our members decided to, to appeal. They actually decided to go to court over that, over that case. And, and they won. In the end, they created a, a, the, they changed the, the format of the, the company and so they bought out the, the, the shares so it became a different type of, of instrument and the, 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 the case, cases had to stop. Um, but again, that was really interesting because, you know, from the perspective of the music sector, you know, it's not, it's not the sexiest part of the, of the business you know, to talk about what happens when, you know, there's a merger decision and you talk to regulators. But actually, you know, it was a really significant moment. And it was a really significant moment, not just in the music sector, but for other sectors, because it was the first time that there was any kind of collective action by the, 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 the competitors to say, okay, enough's enough, this is important. So it really transformed, uh, you know, how mergers in other sectors are treated as well. It's, it's really interesting. So not only just in the music sector, yeah. Impala has been a, a set a precedent yeah, to, yeah. to change the way that the yeah, European yeah. Union look at uh, other yeah, mergers absolutely. in other industries yeah. as well. I, I mean, you say, you say it may not be sexy, but you may be able to tell us what music Cla Claude Juncker likes, for instance. You could, <laughs> you know, the head of the European Commission or someone, he, he might like, I don't know, ZZ Top or something like that, <laughs> you know? You never know. I don't know um, what kind of music uh, he likes, but certainly he had uh, somebody who used to write speeches for him. There was a real, was a real music fan. So you, you do have, um, you, you do have music fans all, all over, and that's, that's he, what it makes it interesting. He dropped, he dropped various things into Claude's <laughs> speeches without him knowing. He was quoting like lyrics from yes, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, from the, the Behemoth or the, something. Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. <laughs> Perfect. And, and that's interesting because in the you know halfway through there's always a, you know, the, there's a that's what they call the Juncker plan, which is you know a reworking of some of the budget for the for the EU and they've put they put more money into into the creative sectors and into music specifically. So you know that's that's something which is is interesting to see that at that kind of political level. So f punching at this level yep. within the European Union. You then obviously Impala then went on to to the U, the Universal EMI. I yes. think in 2012 there was a, then a Universal EMI um, merger yep. as well. So then I think because of the action of Impala, there was a um, Universal had to diversify the. Yes. There was a diversification of a asset. Yep. So which a result was. Yeah, that was. That was a really interesting case because I know I've said interesting too many times because <laughs> it might, a might not a obviously be interesting. To. But what happened there was that was the biggest set of uh, major remedies in any case that the EU has ever considered. If you look at it proportionally, obviously there have been bigger companies merging. Yeah. But in terms of the proportion of what they had to sell off, it was huge. And um, and that that you know then created uh, an opportunity because for Impala's members, what they were concerned about was was not just the fact that you know it was one major company eating another. They were concerned about the fact there was there was this move away with uh, two major companies forming a duopoly and then being able to take decisions on behalf of everyone else. So what are the, what are the terms going to be with, with a digital service? You know, who's going to be making, shaping those, uh, the offers that, that, that music fans are going to get? You know, that was the gap between the independents and the majors was, was really a big uh, concern. And, and clearly there weren't that many potential buyers for such a big set of assets. Um, so we decided that to, it was, there were, we had to do two things and, and one thing was to, to, to create or reinforce the next competitor to the duopoly so that they had, they, you know, the, there was more pressure there, but also to reinforce the, the independent sector. So that was when we did this deal with, um, with, with Warner and, you know, well, what happened there was a, you know, a, a rerun of a deal that had already been done 
um, years before when when um, Warner was interested in buying EMI the the the, the second time, and there. I think Warner agreed that reinforcing the independent sector was important, that building capacity was important, and that independence played a, a fundamental role. So that was an example where if you work together, you can actually achieve more than the regulators would normally do because you know, maybe they're maybe just a little bit more conservative and, and they won't necessarily find solutions for a sector. But we, working together, created the pressure to find a solution that went much, much, much further. Yeah. So I, I didn't introduce myself at the start, but I think Helen said that um, I'm from PS and we saw the benefit of that, of that particular deal because Universal owned Cooperative. Yes. Which now is obviously <coughs> PS yeah. Cooperative. It's yeah, PS yeah, yeah. owned. It's yeah. part of the diversification yeah, that came, came to us from, from Universal. So, and, and I think the independent labels within that cooperative, if you like, um, are certainly now, you know, they were skeptical of whether, you know, how this will work for them, but I think in the end it was a, a very good move for those labels. They would now say it was probably the best move, so it's certainly, I speak from experience that it is something that has helped those independent labels for sure. Um, so. We're kind of talking about uh, Impala in a way that why I can see why media think there are battles, that Impala fights battles against majors. Um, but in actual fact, there are several examples of Impala working closely with the majors for the industry in general to drive better, better deals as, as well. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. So when it comes to issues like copyright and and and, and piracy, for example, you know, these are issues which you know, we tend to to share the same view about. You know, we tend to to share the same view that you know, copyright is is a basic tool. It needs to be reinforced. One example right now is working together with the with the EU on the revision of of of, of copyright. Um, and, and these are these are examples where you have to work together, and not just in music, but all cultural sectors have to work together because you have to make it easy for those that make decisions to understand what they need to do. So not working together just doesn't make sense, and there's a lot of common issues there. So it's really interesting when you consider that, yeah, Impala is is, is often viewed as you know maybe a protagonist or um, you know a, a fighter, and and that's, that's that's certainly true. But you can be you know fighting one day, and then the next day you can be all joined up in you know speaking from the the, the same sheet about something something totally different. And certainly the majors don't. They don't view Impala in that in that way, I, even no. though there are issues where Impala has been in court or the independent sector yeah. via Impala has been in, in court with the majors. They don't see it as a, I think in, in real terms, they see it as, yes, this is in the interest of the industry, might be not in the interest of us as a corporate, massive corporation, yeah. but it is in the interest of the, of the industry. Yeah, I think it is an interest of, of, of the majors to have a strong, uh, independent sector, because if you have a strong independent sector, then the, the market's more stable. I mean, we, we, this question about majors and independence is something that, that we've discussed, obviously. And, and as an organisation, we actually f decided a couple of years ago that, you know, do, do we need to talk about majors and independence anymore? You know, we're all music companies and we're all investing in, in artists. And certainly our job is, or certainly in Palace job, I think, is to, to, to see our artists and our music fans and, and work out how those two go together. And, you know, all artists are born, are born equal and, and Palace job is to make sure that actually means something and concrete. So while we work together on copyright, we probably will work a little bit more on when it comes to, to platforms and when it comes to how you deal with smaller, smaller, companies 
because that's a big issue. You know, we talk about, you know, copyright and we talk about the, the value gap where that's platforms that maybe are not licensing properly or are under licensing or underpaying. And when we, as Impala, will add another gap into that. So we'll talk about the power gap, which is where we as, you know, a collective of smaller companies will see a difference in how we might be treated compared to how bigger companies are, are treated because there's a difference in power. We have less power. And Impala doesn't look. It doesn't look at big, small, yeah. in a way. In, no, no, not, not in that kind of like, no. it's old fashioned way, I don't think no. so, no. It's, and, and it doesn't, I, I, I do believe there is a need to say, I think that, I don't know what your, uh, opinion on it is, but I, th I would say that there is a, there's a different approach by the majors to the art. Yes. We have a, so from an independent point of view, we have a completely different approach to, to that art and how that art's are created and how it should be nurtured. And, and I think that the majors are, m maybe, you know, when I started in the music industry, I guess, a very long time ago, I won't say how long, but a very long time ago, it, it was, we didn't think about whether we were tell. making, <laughs> no, I'm not saying, but, <laughs> but we didn't think about, uh, I don't think we thought about making money. We thought about putting records yes. out that were great records. And I think that's the, the still very much true. I think we do think about money much more now <laughs> than we yeah. used to, obviously. But I think it's very, still very true that, um, you're still more likely to stick your neck out with something if you think it's great music. And I think the majors are, are not so likely to do that. And I, so I do think there's a difference between, yeah. and that's, I, mean, I still think that term, that's why that term still exists. Yeah. And certainly you've got in, in the independent side a very strong um, presence around the brand of, of labels. You know, what, what does a label's name mean? What does it say? What's the history? What are the other artists? And I think that's part of our job as well, is to, to, to make sure those stories are, are told because artists and music fans are really interested in, 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 in what you stand for. Yeah. The, but this is a good aside, I think, here, is that y you, um, if, y if you're a music fan, you love 4AD, for instance. It's a label that you, you think, I, I trust Bella Union, I trust 4AD. They're always going to yeah. give me music that I, that I love. But it's very difficult to search by label on services. So is this something that is... Yeah, I mean that, that's, that's clearly a, a fundamental issue. When you're in uh, a sector where you have a strong brand around a label, you, that has to be accessible. And it, you, our job is to, to, to make sure that what being a label is about and what it means in the history and all the stories behind that, that that's also that's also coming across in the in the digital world world because you know it is important. It's part of the fabric of the music sector. So yeah. those type of issues are really important. Yeah. So we've covered working closely with the the majors. We've covered the so-called battles. Um, I want to talk about how Impala was obviously formed in two, whichever way you look at yeah, it, yeah. 2000 yeah, yeah. for me. Um, <laughs> and then by 2001, you were already knocking on the door of the European Union and the rate and, you know, speaking to regulators um, about two sizable companies merging, merging together. How easy was it to actually get to the right people in the European Union and have those those discussions and present the independence case, even though Impala was maybe not even one year old at that yeah. at that point. Yeah, it was surprisingly easy um, because I think those, those stories had never been told, and they are compelling. You know, that's one thing that we have are you know are compelling stories, interesting. So, you know, it was actually relatively easy. I think also a few years later, um, you know, we, we were part of a, a kind of movement that was around what the economic value of music and cultural sectors stands for. And 
what are the employment figures? You know, how big are we? And that also helped, I think, to, to open doors at that point and also to, to, to really encourage a different kind of movement within um, political circles about the importance of, of what happens locally because these jobs are not going anywhere. You can't relocate your artists, you can't relocate your, 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 your local culture. It's, it's, it's not possible. Your fans might move, but where it comes from remains, and, and those who work in the sector. So these examples, and there are so, so, so many, um, are, are, I think, really important. Also for us, what was interesting is that we were able to raise issues that hadn't come up. So um, copyright and, 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 and piracy, which you know, are so important, you know, the fundamental issues, um, got heard. And you know that's a message that still needs to be heard in loads of countries. You know, I was just hearing this morning about the situation in, in Slovenia. You know, it's really time for the Slovenian government to, to do a lot more to, to support the, the Slovenian cultural sector. Um, and for us, it was also um, uh, it was also interesting to hear that you know decision makers had had you know wide open ears when it came to questions of of, of finance. You know, when it came to, to other issues like access to, to market, you know, how diverse is, is European radio, for example, and you look at the different statistics. You know, those type of questions were, 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 were new, I think, at that, at that time. So there were different elements that, that came together. So I think that um, certainly we didn't really have any difficulties in, in getting, getting so doors open. So, so it, it just shows you, you know, if you build it and take it somewhere, people will listen. But it ticked every box for the European Union, in a way. Yes, I mean certainly the timing was right. Yeah. And you, so you look at small business, you yep. look at employers, you look at uh, entrepreneurs, yep. you look at developing business, yep. etc. Everything that the EU, cultural yep. diversity, everything that the EU stands for, actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. it does tick the. Yeah. And the, the reinforcement of local local economies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. So no wonder it was easy. <laughs> and they wanted free CDs, probably. Yes. As well. Yeah. Um, so tell, tell us a little bit about that. Obviously, the, I, d I don't know if everybody um, knows about Merlin, which is uh, also Impala was very, um, it was at the cutting edge of, of setting up in the first place and, and actually driving through. How did the, I think Merlin was set up in 2007 or? Yeah, and before then, actually, the independent sector was already cooperating on, uh, on like pre-Merlin deals. In the Merlin is is the the licensing body for the independent sector, so it's like a one-stop shop for the independents for the world, and they can license the, the digital services. And before then, there were already deals that were done. So Impala and and Aim at that at that point in the UK did, for example, a licensing deal with with Napster when Napster was the, the world's second biggest brand. Only Coca-Cola was the most recognized brand in front of, of Napster at that point. The, the imagine, imagine a world where Napster was the world was the second, second most recognized brand. And the majors at the time were taking Napster to court. Yes. So, you know, there was a different, different uh, approach now. I think the approach is, is, is more, more aligned now. But certainly that was, the, yeah, that's very typical, I think, of the, of the independent sector, early adopters moving to, to, to license to explore new, new opportunities. And, um, yeah, that raised a few eyebrows. And that was a forerunner to, 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 to Merlin. But Merlin, I think most independent labels would agree has totally transformed the, the independent sector and its presence and its power. And they can go to, to digital services, they can go to platforms and say, you know, we're 80% of the market. You know, you need us so much. And you know, it's one of the interesting things that, that has come up in discussions at Impala in the last couple of years is, you know, we always talk about a level playing field and clearly a level playing field is important, but actually we are 80% of the market. So, you know, maybe we, need to, we don't need a level playing field anymore. Maybe we want a premium, maybe we want more because that's what we stand for. You know, there's a, there's a, a new equation that, that needs to come into the, to the, to the market now. So, do you believe that you <laughs> we should be looking <laughs> for a premium? Yes, I do believe, yeah, absolutely. And do you think that's achievable? I mean, obviously, it's a flippant question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a bit yeah. of a flippant question, but... Well, if you don't try, 
yeah, you don't you don't get there. It would take a long, long time. Um, but certainly, yeah, I, th I think. I mean, does everyone think? Anyone else think that uh, independent music here? If you look like of the the eighty percent statistic, do you think that those who are in the eighty percent should get more? Mute. Yeah, no, I I see I see uh, nodding. Nods. There's nods. some nods. Yeah. 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 80% of new releases. In the numbers. So, so it's 80% in the numbers, like in the whole numbers, yeah? As, what as in number yeah. of... As, as in quantity of, of music. Quantity of music, yes. So, so a digital service needs all the music, otherwise yeah. it's not interesting. So we are 80% of the value mm. of the, the service, yeah. terms when it comes to new releases. Ag aggregators tend to talk in hundreds of thousands of tracks rather than... Oh, yeah. Um, so, it brings us on, uh, Merlin obviously brings us on nicely, I think, to the Apple Music yeah. case, the, th the three-month trial Taylor Swift saga. <laughs> so, there's a, obviously Apple were in the throes of launching their, their uh, belated streaming service in 2015, around that time, um, and there was a problem with their free... There was a three month trial, introductory trial, and there was a, a serious problem with this, yeah. this trial. Yeah, there was a big question about whether during that trial, whether um, music companies should be paid during the trial. Okay? And there was an expectation from Apple that th they could do the trial without paying <coughs> any, of the, any of the music companies. And uh, Merlin said, actually, no, we, we don't want to be receiving nothing during that trial because Apple is is clearly you know gaining from the fr from the trial. So what what they did was they they, they said we we want to be remunerated and Taylor Swift was one of the the, the artists who you know who who went public and, and and made a fuss about it and you know Apple was 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 forced to 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 agree that during the trial artists should be remunerated. And of course, it was a benefit that didn't stop at the independent sector because they had to apply it across. So that was an example of the independents negotiating an extra benefit for the majors as well as for the independents. Yeah. So that, that was, um, so that's a really so crucial... action from Merlin, but was basically the catalyst to make Apple change the... Yeah. Changed the model change for everyone, for everybody, yeah, absolutely. rather than just yeah, yeah, yeah. for us. It, they changed it for yeah. ev every company. And Taylor Smith S Swift was a little late to the game. Well, I think she, she, the, 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 certainly it was, a, it was, uh, you know, the, it was, it was the right time, you know, because it was important. It's very important for artists to to stand up for what they 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 they, they believe in. And um, I mean, she wasn't negotiating the deal. Clearly, Merlin was negotiating it's the, already the, done. <laughs> the deal. But you know, whenever an artist stands up and 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 makes an important statement about about how they get paid and 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 what that type of of issue means, it's it's really really important. So, is if we if we if we look at Impala as a I don't know, there's a there's a film called High Fidelity and they, they're always making tapes. They're always making top fives. And they write them down and they always make their top fives. So if you if you looked at <laughs> Impala as a you know, you're in high fidelity and, and you wanted to uh, write down your top five, yeah. what would your be top five achievements for for Impala, do you think? Okay, well, I, I would say that that uh, one in that, that class action, yeah. I would say, um, you know, managing to to do that deal with 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 Warner and and deliver it was just closed closed last year. Um, I would say the the probably the, the best I think the best thing we've done is the the young label spotlight for Impala's 15th birthday. So there we did the, we did a series, we did it actually with Independent Echo, we did a series of features on labels under the age of 15 right across Europe. So we did five under 15 every month. 
and um, and that that was you know the idea behind that was to to really shine a light on the work of of, of labels that might not necessarily be so known across you know, across across Europe, and of course the the work of of younger labels is really important because they represent the, the future and renewal within the, the sector. So uh, that is you know a fun, I think that's, that's a great initiative, and we decided to do that for our our fifteenth our fifteenth birthday. Was that three? Yeah. Three. That's three. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, I think fourth is something that we were asking for a long, for a long, long, long time. And this is basically a European scheme to get loans guaranteed so that if you, as a music company, you go to your bank and you say, I want a loan, and the bank goes, not sure, aren't you a bit risky? Then there's a, a, a guarantee mechanism in behind that can step in and make that bank feel comfortable that you can, um, that even if you are a risk, then there's some and protection there. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and, and that's just being implemented now. There are national banks that are, that are being appointed. That, that is going to generate millions of, of new loans for music, music companies and other cultural sectors. And it's all for smaller companies. Yeah, it's totally dedicated. And, and that is something that... that that I think Impala was the first uh, organisation to ask for. And I remember we went to Luxembourg. Luxembourg is where the European Bank is. It's where the European Investment Fund is. And we went there and you would say, well, you know, you, why about doing this, you know, creating a, a, a scheme? And they were like, wow, these are, just, they said, I think, I think the expression was real people <laughs> had come to visit. In, in, in Luxembourg, and, and here we are. But, but then, you know, that's a long-term project. You know, that, that is 10 years in the making. Yeah, these things aren't yeah, implemented yeah, yeah. over, overnight. And, um, and, and fifth, I think, is, is really um, about storytelling. So through Impala and, 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 and through the national associations, you know, the ability to, to tell stories about the independent sector, the ability to, to have like a common reflection. So the collective intelligence you get out of, of, of being together, working together, thinking about, okay, what do we need to brainstorm in the, in the, in, in, in the future? Where do we need to go? I mean, those are, 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 are things that you know, Impala and, and, and other national associations do as well. They do that every day. You know, we, we tell stories and we think, and that's collective intelligence and collective storytelling. And those, those things are really compelling. So that, that, they make a big difference. So you I think that's five. That is five. Yeah. So well done. Top five. Top five. Uh, it'll be published at some, some point in some... Yeah music journal somewhere, uh, if they still exist. Um, so, <laughs> um, so it's not all been, it's fair to say it's not all been plain sailing though. It, at times there have been, there have been rough seas yes. in the Impala Ocean. Absolutely. It could be said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. There, we have a, a list of top five achievements, but what would you, uh, how, how difficult is it with 4,000 plus members yeah. A board, a board that at times has differences, shall we say? Um, how easy is it to hold the whole, as the executive chair, how easy is it to hold the whole thing together? Well, it is surprisingly easy on most issues. I mean, it's also partly due to the way Impala was set up. So in our statutes, it's got this provision that says Impala must try and take decisions by unanimity. So basically our job is to try and make sure everyone agrees before a decision is taken. Okay? Sometimes that's not possible. Um, but there you know there is an amazing amount of um, <coughs> collective effort and willingness to work together in this in, 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 in the sector. So I think there's a natural tendency to try and find solutions that, that, that work and that suit everyone, or that can be tailored, you know, that, that are flexible. Uh, at the same time, you know, I have had uh, an email which says that I should go and work in North Korea. Nice. Yeah. So, 
you know, these are you know the different examples of, of you know what happens when um, things get you know hairy. So is Impala actually developing nuclear weapons as we speak? Uh, yeah, yes, yeah? yes, yes. That was one of the 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 the, the, the statute. It, well, we've got it guaranteed. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, you know, that there have been, and, and you know, it's also down to, you know, these issues are really important and they're not easy. You know, when we were negotiating with Warner, you mentioned, you mentioned, you mentioned that. You know, there were a lot of different views. You know, is it something that should be done? What are the priorities? You, you have to decide how, how, how far do you, do you, do, do you go? You know, it's really important that all national associations have the opportunity to consult. At the same time, you have to move quickly. So all these factors come in, but, you know, we, we, we have had situations where, you know, people have not been talking and today they're all around the table again talking, you know. So it, it's um, a storm in, I would say, a relatively calm sea, which is where the, where the wind is always changing, but it doesn't but really... The, but the market's always changing at Yeah, the same exactly. Time, so. And people always have uh, new ideas and, and different views. And at every single meeting, there's always something comes up which has never been discussed before. Yeah. So, so one of and the roughest, the roughest seas, the biggest storm would have been the... Yeah, the, the North Korea incident. The, yeah, yeah, the North Korean incident, aside from the North Korean email, uh, would have been the, the Warner... Yeah, well, that was in the same. That was in the same. Uh, to basically context. say we won't, we won't block another yeah. or attempt to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we block. would we wanted a, a third. We wanted a, a competitor, to Universal and and and, and Sony. So, w when we did that deal, you know, we were, we were also. You know, so you're as wary of, say, for instance, that I mean, obviously now there are three majors, yeah, effectively. Um, and so you're aware, uh, uh, as such, that there always has to be competition between the majors, as well as the competition with the indo within the independent sector. But if there's one more merger, there are two. Mer uh, you know, there are two majors. Could there ever be one major? Huh. I, I would say I don't. I don't think so. Um, I think Paul has always said that there needs to be more majors because you need big companies, you need big companies, you need medium companies, small, micro, nano, um, and there is there is a there is a gap in the in the, in the in the market. You know, like the biggest independent has probably like one and a half, two percent, depending across Europe, depending on. Um, and you would think even if Impala can't attempt to discuss blocking. A, war, a Warner, you know, or whatever yeah. it might be, merger. You would think that the EU would actually. Oh, we're free to. You would trust we're, we're the regulator. Well, that's a one-off. That was in relation to to, to Parlophone. Yeah. So we, we we would never conclude a deal where we, we you know our hands are tied yeah, for the future. You can't do yeah, it in yeah, the yeah. Future. So we're free to do, to yeah. continue the same the same message, which is, you know, at some point concentration is is not good for the market because the gap between the big and the, the medium and small is just is is, is too big, yeah. It's too wide. So it's it's hard, like it is in other sectors, it's hard to get more bigger sized companies to grow, which is why things like access to, to finance and loan guarantees, etc., why those things are, are also important. Because it's not just a question of access to market, it's a question of, of how you get finance to, to grow your operations. So challenge, your challenges for the future would be, what do you see as, there's the power gap we talked about. Yep. A big challenge for the future. There's a, is the, the value gap. Everything's a, a gap. A gap, yeah. Yeah, value, mind, mind the gap. The, mind the gap, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mind the gap, power gap, and value gap. So these are the, what you see as the, yeah. the biggest challenges for the future for Empower? Well, those are things that we're working on right now. So there's a new, um, there's a review of copyright legislation in Europe. It's happening, happening right now. And one of the issues that they will uh, address is this notion of the value gap or the transfer of value, which is basically um, the result of, of platforms either not paying or are underpaying, okay, for, for music, despite the fact that they're clearly di distributing. And there's also the question of you know, whether or not that's uh, 
proper competition for other services that, that are properly licensed, okay? So um, that's what some people call the value gap, so others call it a transfer of value because basically you know, the platforms are, are taking, sucking value away out of, the, out of the, the cultural sector by using music, okay, and not paying properly for it. And that's something which is going through now with a whole load of other issues in, in the copyright review. There's also, as you, as you said, the, the, the power gap. That's um, something which is very important to us, maybe less important to the bigger companies, but it's really important for us to, to have a framework which basically says if you are in the digital market or in the physical market, then you shouldn't be able to discriminate. You shouldn't be able to start off saying, you get less because you're signed to a small label. You know, actually, you know, we want the yeah. we want the eighty percent as we know. But um, <laughs> so the starting point is is you know the the EU looking at whether platform behaviour needs to be regulated, unfair trading practices. You know, they're going to produce something on that next year. You know, there's going to be legislation this year actually now they're going to produce legislation and everyone's going to discuss it and and work out and and whether or not this power gap is properly addressed by um by regulation and what's interesting right now is that although across europe you have loads and loads of different countries with very very different priorities you know i just mentioned uh, slovenia this morning we have a a, a balkans group that that's work, working together on on common issues and we can see that there, you know there are really diverse issues and the question of engagement from key actors and en engagement from governments is really really important it's really important commercially and it's really important politically so these are our our, our top priorities but you know the 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 question also is interesting from the perspective of Europe in the world. You know, nowhere else in the world are we looking at these questions. Oh, the, I think that shows you how much value um, the, the EU is putting on our culture, our efforts, our jobs that, that won't be, be, be relocated. And I know that's not the same in every country. You know, there are, there, are, there are lots of countries that, that you know, need to, to understand that and, and reinforce that support and create the right conditions. But it's interesting that at EU level, at least, then we can see, you know, a, a, a huge recognition tackling um, platforms and uh, other big tech companies not paying tax. You know, a couple of years ago, we had an example where Beggars Group was paying more tax in the UK than all the GAFA companies put together. Ludicrous. I mean, that's, 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 a, that's something not quite right there. And, and, and that's something you was also looking at, the, the, they got Apple to, 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 to repay billions in uh, illegal yeah. tax, as illegal state aid, um, because by, letting, by not getting them to pay tax, they consider that to be an unfair, un, you know, it's like giving money, and it's unfair competition. So you know, we have the, the Danish um, Vestager, you know, she's a female um, competition. Um, some people call her a competition star, some people call her a competition commissioner. She's the, the competition queen, she is really taking a strong, a strong stance and, and that's a, a very good message internationally. So there's a lot, of many things for, yeah. for the future that, but all, it's interesting that everything seems to be, you know, it's in conjunction with, a bigger organization so there are smaller groups and then it goes goes into impala then impala is is going to regulators and the you yeah. know the eu at large the european bank etc so without these without actually impala a lot of these things would never actually come to the fore they would never actually be be addressed in any in any way and there are some things that impala are coming up with that that actually you know, are being addressed because no one is really the group is thinking about them. If you, if you like, in creating that, yeah, the, yeah, the de environment. There are definitely things that, that just would not be there if if it wa if it wasn't for Impala. I think other issues, you know, are probably would be addressed anyway. You know, we we, we you know, the review of copyright. You know, is is something that so many sectors are are, are asking mm -hmm. for. You know, there are issues in 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 in, in, in the book publishing yeah. and film. You know, there's 
there, there's, a, there's a common effort there. It's not just Impala. So um, I'm going to open it. We've got 10 minutes or so left, so uh, good timing. So um, I'm going to open it up to the floor. I think, um, is there any questions that anybody, anybody has? There's some Impala members in the room who must have questions, surely. I can see them. Anybody for questions? Come on. Hi, Žiga Drofenik, uh, Universal Music Publishing, Slovenia. I would like to ask you, um, what do you think the outcome will be um, on the value gap issue? Um, because uh, in Slovenia, all of the music industry supports the fight for value gap, but the problem is that none of our representatives in the European Parliament are doing that for us. So Slovenia is one of the rare countries that in the European Parliament is not is decided not to uh, challenge the value gap. So I would like to hear your opinion about that. And what can we do as music industry to change the opinion of our representatives in the parliament? Yeah, Thanks. I think um, the, the example of, of, of Slovenia is, is interesting. It's not isolated. Um, but I think there is a general trend towards understanding the, 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 understanding the issue by other governments, um, certainly a level of understanding which didn't exist before, or which wasn't heard, or which was drowned out by, you know, uh, organised voices that that, that 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 talk about, you know, how bad it is to 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 protect copyright. Um, in, in certainly the things that have worked but they take a long time are are statistics about how important the cultural sectors are. You know, and working together so that it's not just a music question, it's also about, you know, the creative industries working together. I think some countries, you know, may just not be ready to to support action and, and, and that's a shame because they're letting down you know, they're letting down those uh, their their local creators and their, their local companies. Um, but you know, it's, it's something that we should not give up on. So it's not about just about the value gap. It's about the long, the long term game, which is about getting um, these issues understood and getting action. Not just because of the issue, but because you have a relationship and because there is respect. Because the statistics you can't fight with a report that says you're worth X percent or you're bigger than um, you're bigger than chemicals or you're bigger than cars or you're bigger than, than this. so that I think that is probably one of the things that, that, that works and then of course it's a question of, of, of education you know, and it's also a question of, of the, the different actors you know just keeping plugging away it might whether it'll happen in Slovenia in time for the 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 value gap and for time for the copyright directive, then that might be that might be difficult to to predict. You you don't look very optimistic. No. But um, you know these are you know, there comes a point when uh, a country's actions are 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 not acceptable. And the EU, for example. I think you know, it writes to different countries at different times about the fact that they're not implementing EU law. So there comes a point where there is a, a dereliction of, of duty and, and, and those issues are, are assessed. You know, member states get letters, etc., and say, why are you doing this? Mm -hmm. you know, clearly that's not the, the best way is to, be, is to try, uh, is to hope that your decision makers are going to be inspired because they want Slovenia to be one of the best countries in the world to be an artist. They want Slovenia to be one of the best places to run a creative business because it's important and because Slovenian music is important, Slovenian ac um, jobs are important, so is the language. And, and that if you're coming here and you're operating a digital service, then you're doing something for the Slovenian music sector as a result, and, and, and it's the, the government's role there is absolutely crucial because they can do a PR role, they can do a regulatory role, and, and, and you know, it's, it's a lost opportunity. So I think the, the, the great opportunity is to, to, to hope that governments are going to be inspired by taking a stance and be inspired by the opportunities. So if they can be um, 
put into some kind of figures, like what you would see the digital market in, in Slovenia or the physical market, whatever it is, it, with the proper <coughs> level of support, what you would predict the, the outcome to be, how much revenue we'd be talking about, um, how many um, new artists you'd be able to sign, how many... Um, how much you'd be paying in tax, you know, all the, wh wh how many more jobs you could create. You know, I think that's the, the, I don't know whether it works, but, you know, it's more there'll difficult be, to, more difficult elections to, will be sorry? Soon. elections are soon coming up. So. Yeah, it's difficult to dispute figures like, 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 uh, like that, but that's I the hope. <coughs> I live in a member state that gets lots of letters all the time. Yes. Poland, yeah, lots of letters. Uh, any more questions? The rule of law is... <laughs> All about the rule of law. Yeah. It's not about music, it's about law. Anybody else? No? There's my question here. Um, uh, hello, my name is Mar. I'm working for a different um, record labels. I have my, o my own one. Um, I uh, just have a question regarding... Um, digital trials you said that apple music paid uh for free trials what about spotify deezer and all the other members title as far as i know they were yeah, they, they, they also paid yeah they pay they they I mean, so not, not paying okay. yeah not paying the normal rates but you know paying lower rates yeah, yeah. To the, the use of music. Sorry. The Apple, the Apple issue was they paid zero. There was no below uh, premium rate. So, uh, but Spotify, every you know, all the others with a free trial actually pay a rate. It's lower than the normal premium rate, but they do. They've always paid a rate, and they always see saw that as fair. I think this is part of the reason why um, Apple actually the you know obviously the lobby towards Apple was. Uh, was very strong, but also the the examples in the industry already were that royalty was coming from the other free uh, trials as well. A precedent. Yeah. A precedent. There was definitely a precedent. Um, so that's it. We um, thank you very much, Helen. Thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you for your time and thank you for your time as well. <laughs>